What I'd like to show you here is AutoCAD PNID. Now this is available as a standalone package or as part of the AutoCAD Plant 3D suite which is what I'm demonstrating on here. Now as you can see to control the, the PNIDs and the drawings which are generated on the project I'm using the project manager here to, con to control and manage them. So you can see the PNIDs are stored there the plant 3D items, isometric drawings, orthographic drawings, etc. But let's just concentrate on the PNID drawings for this uh, purpose. Now, as you can see, I've got a PNID open, and the, the user interface is based on a standard AutoCAD platform with the ribbon across the top of the screen and a standard tool palette. Now, the tool palette has been populated with industry standard symbols, as you can see. Um, these can be added to with uh, project specific or company standard symbols if you have any and put into the tool library so they can be placed onto the PNID uh, as required. So what I'd like to just show you is how to route some uh, standard lines and put some inline items on them lines and tag the system uh, and just show you some of the functionality behind the PNID system itself. So the first thing I want to do is put a line between the heat exchanger E100 and the vessel T100. So let's go and pick a primary standard process line and let's go and snap onto the, the flange. Uh, as you can see there, it's picking up the node of the flange from the heat exchanger. And I just want to route the line over to the vessel itself. Now the system is going away and looking at how to connect that line to the vessel T100 and you'll see that it's picked up a flanged nozzle and it's also assigned a tag of N1. Now we can change the uh, the nozzle itself by clicking the little arrow and then we have a few options which is defined within the project. Um, but let's just take the default flanged nozzle. So what I'd like to do then is uh, assign a tag to this line and we do that by simply selecting the line and bringing this dialog box up. The line number itself will be populated by the input from the fields below here. So let's first of all pick a size for the line, so let's say it's an 8 inch line. Then define what specification the line is. So you can see you've got carbon steel, stainless steel, some plastics in there. So let's pick a £150 carbon steel specification. And now we have to define what process is running through that line. So let's say this is just a general process, purpose, uh, process line. Now we have to give that a unique identifier. So I'm going to select 9999. Now if that's already existing on this PNID or another PNID in the system, uh, the PNID will come back and tell me that it's not unique and we must identify it with a, another unique identity. And let's place a tag item onto the PNID once finished. So the system then is going populating the database behind the system coming back and allowing us to place the line identity next to the line itself like so. So what I'd like to do then is just add some inline uh, valves to the system. So let's pick a standard gate valve, place that down. Now you'll see that the line has automatically been broken but it's also been assigned an 8 inch size due to the line tag there because we've already specified 8 inch there so it's picking up the intelligence um, between the line and the valve itself and again let's just place a globe valve on there again it's picked eight inch and it's broken the line so now let's assign a tag to them two valves we do that like so you'll see that the assigned tag dialog box has slightly changed because it's it's a valve this time and not a line so let's do that and put a number in now this time you'll see there's an automatic numbering button appeared and all this will do is it'll go to the database and pick the next valve number which is available in the database itself. Now because nothing's been tagged on the diagram up now, it's picking up 001 as the first um, identity of the valve. And let's just place that. And again, let's go to the assign tag and pick our second valve. Again, we get the dialog box up, let's give that VA, and this time if we select the automatic generator, you'll see that it's got 002, because it knows that 001 was previously assigned, and 002 is the next one in the system. Okay, so you can see there we've just quickly placed two inline items, two valves on a process line. Uh, the next thing I'd like to show you is some of the dynamic functionality of the line. Um, again, let's just pick a general purpose line, let's pick a flange up there and let's connect it to the vessel itself and again it'll go off and select there and pick the next tag number to connect it to the vessel itself. Now let's go and select this time 
a check valve, a normally turn valve, and put that into the line itself. Again, it'll break the line. But as you notice, the symbol itself is pointed in the direction of the flow of the line. Now, to show you how that works and is dynamic, if we go into the schematic line editor and let's just reverse the flow of that line. And as we've done that, you will see that the, the valve itself has swapped its, swapped its orientation to suit the flow of the line. Something else that's very good in PNID is the, the data manager. Now this is all the information that's stored behind the system. As you can see there, this is the data manager for our current drawing. So let's just go down into say our lines and have a look at the primary lines that are on there. And you'll see that we've, uh, we have our line 9999, which is the one we've just generated. And um, let's just have a look along that line at some of the uh, the fields that can be filled in so you can see the design pressure, temperatures, uh, pressure ratings, the insulation that's being used, etc. Now this can be all exported out into spreadsheets, into line lists, valve lists, etc. But what's very useful uh, in the PID system is that you can export this spreadsheet out into a Microsoft Excel. Now this allows an engineer to start populating some of this information while the PID designer is uh, still drawing the systems. Once the engineer has finished with it, we can then simply import it back into the system. Once it's imported back in the system, all the changes the engineer's done will be highlighted in yellow, allowing the, uh, the CAD designer to either accept or decline the input that's been there, but it'll also keep him up to date with the changes that has been, uh, been taking place uh, offline and not within the PID system itself.